More lawsuits being filed against Diddy, this time Audrea English, a former porn star who performed under the stage name Amunique, I'm going to guess, I don't know, uh, filed a criminal complaint against Diddy uh, this last week alleging that he sex trafficked her and coerced her into non-consensual sexual activities with his party guests. She was seen at several of the white parties. The complaint now follows a 50 billion, with a B, civil lawsuit uh, English filed against Diddy, where she claims he groomed her into sex trafficking, forced her to engage in those sexual acts under the influence of drugs, and threatened to blacklist her from the music industry if she did not comply. Uh, it also lists some other individuals uh, in his uh, you know, circle, Jacob the Jeweler, uh, Tamiko Thomas, who is also accused of facilitating the trafficking operation and several others. Uh, and this, these allegations go go way back. Um, I believe we're talking early 2000s, early 90s in some of this. Not to say it's not true, but what's your take on this one? We're talking a $50 billion lawsuit. That's something I've never seen. And again, none of these allegations are good, but Fifty billion dollars? What's going on here? It's it's a, it's a little bit in the bizarre category, and it does raise a red flag about money seeking, doesn't mm, it? Just a um, little, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was my my thought. Is yeah, that's that's pretty much unheard of. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. how do we how do we balance it? You know, add it add her to the list of names, yeah. right? Just another person coming out with these horror stories. So. And I guess that's the big question, um, because there are so many allegations against him and and several of them that before they were made public and you you look at them and you compare them and you go, oh, OK, these are all kind of the same story and not not where they didn't have the ability to look at somebody else's story and go, I'm going to write basically my own version of the same narrative, which we are seeing some of. But I don't know that they're being written by someone else or to follow a narrative, but he clearly does have a bit of a track record. How are they going to decipher in these allegations going forward what is legit, what is not legit? I mean, other when somebody tries to sue you for $50 billion, maybe that mm -hmm. is a red flag. But the other ones that are not like that, the ones that are just kind of par for the course for him, how do you decipher this stuff? I mean, I, I mean, he's he's been settling them his entire life. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that he's going to be doing a whole lot of that going forward because it would show some guilt. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and it's a federal investigation for all these things going on as well. Yeah. So how do you tell? Yeah. Good question. With a person like this, how many witnesses can corroborate the story? You know, mm -hmm. what other kind of evidence do you have to support it? And my guess is that some will have a lot of evidence and in other cases, maybe not, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, at some point, I, I do wonder, you know, as of right now, he's not been arrested. He's not been charged with anything. Uh, the investigation continues on. The grand jury is still convened. Um, it, it, at some point, is it just going to just be kind of like Cosby, you know, where not every single one of them is going to go to a trial um, or Epstein, where it's just like add your name to the list, um, right. you know, and, and then you end up on some sort of giant graphic that's just like yeah. making up the face of the perpetrator that we end up seeing in a documentary at some point. Yeah, that's my guess. I, th I think you're right. Uh, it, it, it's, it's just one of, of many um, charges against him. Um, when you have this sort of thing going on, I mean, how do you, uh, how do you work through it? I mean, if you have a, a client that, and obviously it's, it's very hard to compare anything because it's Diddy and that's quite a level beyond normalcy for anyone, yeah. but anyone who's being accused of these sort of things, I mean, how do you, how do you work with them? I mean, especially if, if it looks pretty damn damning that this stuff is true, but they're saying, no, no, I, I didn't do these sort of things. I mean, is that something to work with, to try and help them get to a point of understanding, like, look, you are guilty, or, or I mean, uh, someone like that, clearly they, there's something mentally wrong and they need some sort of help to get back into the train of reality. Yeah, they're certainly tricky to work with. When um, I've had forensic clients, one of the first things I do is we get actual copies of all the police reports and court documents, and you read them over together because um, people 
who are psychopathic will BS you and they'll deny everything. And so I think that's not a typical thing that you do in therapy with someone is get, get their court records or whatever. But they're, if they're a mandated client, which a person like Diddy would have to be a mandated client, he's yeah. not going to do, do therapy willing to, to come in to work on change. Um, you, you have to get them to face reality or you can't go anywhere with them. So, I mean, he, he made the claim in that video that he now deleted uh, after he got caught with the Cassie, uh, where the Cassie video came out uh, where he apologized and said, he's been seeking therapy or counseling Mm -hmm. or what, I mean, who knows if he did or not kind of Mm -hmm. doubtful, but, but if you were sitting there with Diddy and he's like, I'm seeking counseling and therapy because I have this penchant for beating up women and treating people horribly. I mean, how do you pull somebody like that back if they just continue to do those sort of things without any consequences and and keep living that life, but publicly facing, they're saying, oh, I'm getting help. Is there help? No, I I don't buy that he was actually trying to get help. And and as I always say, when you get a narcissist in therapy or a narcissistic psychopath with sadistic features, as in this case, you know, they're only there to, to... sell you a bill of goods about how wonderful they are and they really want the therapist to admire them and to think that you know whatever this legal problem they have it really wasn't that bad the woman was lying you know i'm i mean it's just this crock of bs and so the idea that a person like that is going to willingly come into treatment and just all of a sudden own you know 50 years of horrendous behavior um because there aren't consequences you know you might have a little bit of an inroad after they're incarcerated after they've been convicted and locked up and and then maybe um you can start getting some honesty out of them uh and that happens sometimes in prison but until there are big consequences i don't see a lot of personal growth going on yeah i mean could it almost be a detriment to someone like that therapy if it just becomes an outlet to for their narcissism Exactly, exactly. Narcissists just want to come to therapy and tell you how great they are. And the therapist is supposed to, you know, accept the money for the hour and mm-hmm. smile and nod and, and confirm, you know, gee, your glow is so brilliant and, and let me bask in it with you, yeah. you know, and that's not what therapy is about. But that's generally what they want when they walk in the door. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts and especially Apple Podcasts where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.